Hey everybody, it's Brandon at the Weekend Cruise. I do a weekend cruise every weekend, and this one was very different. So I actually flew over to the port of Los Angeles to sail out of California. So I did a West Coast weekend cruise. And so I wanted to come to you with some tips on what to expect if you're like me, you're going to the West Coast, some things to do. We'll talk about Ensenada, the port that we went to, um, and just some overall general tips. So let me start out with by saying it's not the Caribbean. So I live in South Florida. That's where I'm based out of. Um, I flew over here expecting similar weather because I just flew west. Uh, it was cold here. So it's been 60 degrees dropping down into the 40s at night. It has been chilly for a cruise ship. So if you are coming to the West Coast for a cruise, specifically in colder times of year, make sure that you're bringing jackets. I luckily have at least this hoodie that I brought with me. Um, I did not bring a jacket. I think I brought one other long sleeve shirt. Um, and I am not alone. There's a lot of people that flew in for this cruise that thought it was going to be warm. We think of cruise ships. We think of Caribbean. That's not this cruise. This cruise is going to be a little bit chillier if you're coming in the winter months. So make sure that you are coming prepared. It's also been extremely, extremely rainy. So make sure you're watching um, the weather and packing accordingly. We did get lucky when we were in Ensenada, but the weather here has not been the best in the world. So getting into Ensenada. Let's talk about the actual port of Ensenada. It is a quaint little port. It's actually bigger than I was expecting to be. Ensenada is a legitimate city. I did no research on going on this cruise other than I saw a weekend cruise, got excited and booked it. Um, but Ensenada is a legitimate Mexican city. It's actually larger than what most of you are expecting. There is a shuttle when you get off at the port to take you into the downtown area for four US dollars. Um, I personally advise not doing that. The port is right there. It is not that far of a walk. It's about 15 minutes, I would say. Um, so if you are able-bodied and wanting to do that, it's certainly a good walk. You um, walk out of the port, make a left over a bridge. You'll see the sign of um, Port of um, Ensenada. And right past that, you're going to be into the city. It almost has a little carnival feel um, when you're walking into the city. But not a bad walk. It gets you out um, since you've been on the cruise ship for a day. Um, it is, it, it's a good walk. Going into the actual city, I would say the first three parallel streets are going to be your tourist streets. So those are the ones that you're probably going to want to stick to. There are a lot of cafes, pharmacies, all sorts of shopping. If you want those um, tchotchkes or trinkets, whatever it is that you like to buy, they will be one of those. Every two stores, it's going to kind of repeat. Um, if you're going to hang out just there, I would say grab a cup of coffee, grab something at a cafe, sit outside. It was a nice, I'd call it fall-like day for me. Um, so that is something that you would probably really enjoy. There are good food options around there too. So make sure that you just keep your eyes open, you're walking around and seeing. If you go past that third street, it very quickly turns into more industrial Mexico and feels more like you've all of a sudden gone, you've left the tourist section and you've now gone into the actual Mexican section, if you will, the non-touristy section, and it is a quick changeover. So make sure that you're just paying attention. Me personally, I of course walked in that direction just to check it out, um, but that's not for everybody. Some people would feel very uncomfortable in that situation. I also found um, a tour group after that to take me over to La Bufreda, and I'm probably saying that horribly wrong. It is the natural blowhole that exists, um, and it's about a 45 minute to an hour drive um, outside of Ensenada. So you do want to find a tour group. That's not something you're going to want to jump in, you know, a cab by yourself to do. I found a tour company called Las Dunas. It is where the shuttle buses actually drop you off at. So if you do pay the $4 and go to where the shuttles are, it's super easy to find. If not, make sure that you're asking around to find where that is. It was $17 to take me to the blowhole and to come back, which I thought was a fantastic price. They did a great job. Um, so I would recommend that company if you're looking to go to the blowhole. It is the one check the box exercise that you want to make sure that you're doing when you come to Ensenada because if somebody hears you came here, they're going to say, oh, did you do the blowhole at La Boferda? Um, that's what they're going to ask you about. They're not going to ask you about the, the downtown area. So make sure that you do make it over there. Once you are at La Boferda, it is a very, very touristy spot. So there's probably a solid 10 to 15 minute walk to actually get to the blowhole, but it's through an open air market and they're going to sell all sorts of, you know, knockoff handbags, leather goods. They're going to have silver. They're going to have lots of food, Mexican pastries, 
a lot of great stuff that you may actually want to buy. Make sure that you're going to be haggling for those prices. Do not pay what they want you to. Um, make sure that you're bringing that down a little bit. They'll also tell you the best food is going to be from Lydia's right at the entrance. That's a great place to get tacos. I had a fish and chicken one for four dollars total um, and they were actually really really good. There's some other people on my tour group that took um, some of the baked clams or grilled clams actually that were over by La Beaufort closer to the um, actual site itself um, and they could not stop raving about them. They said they were even better than the tacos so make sure you check those out as well. The actual blowhole when you get there make sure you're sticking around for a little bit of time based on when the tides are how the waves are going it's going to have small little geysers or it's going to have much larger geysers. So if it's not doing much when you first get there, it wasn't doing much when I got there. I was kind of like, oh, that's it. Um, but as we stayed there, it did pick up um, and it was doing some really neat geyser shots afterwards. Um, so make sure that you do give it a chance. There's always a little bit of a crowd there. But if you're just patient a little bit, people do move out and you're able to move in. There's three different levels that you can stand and watch. I definitely recommend the lower of those. The other two, you can't really see the um, blowhole itself. You can see the water when it sprays up, but you can't see where it initially comes out and actually hear the sound of it. I think that, that was one of the neatest parts to me was actually hearing the blowhole happening, not necessarily just seeing the water. The sound that it made coming up through um, the cave or the crevice that it was in was really, really neat to me. So those are the tips that I have on Ensenada. I am looking forward to hopefully getting to go there again. Um, it was a great spot, but you know, I probably should have done a little bit more research. Hope this helps all of you on my thoughts on Ensenada, Mexico. This is Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser, hoping to see you on a weekend cruise soon.